Hey, this is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. Welcome to today's video. So this is going to be a typewriter tutorial for a 1970s Electra 120. If you wanna see a typing demo for it, there will be a, a link below to um, a product listing uh, for you to go. And then there, there will be a link to a typing demo so you can see if that's what interests you. But this is just gonna show you how to use it. This is the original color. It's a, a gray metallic. It's actually very, very handsome. Let me lift that up for you. And also the, like I said, a product listing link will be below so you can see photos of this up close if you're interested in that. Okay, this one happens to be a 12 inch carriage. 120, 12 inch, 110 is 10 inch. Um, and uh, really designed to be an office machine. Back here is a paper holder. Just keeps the paper from flopping over. It actually is pretty handy. Your margins, left and right margin, left, right margins are right here. And so you just press and drag. Keep in mind that your carriage is gonna move only as far as you have margin set. So if you wanna move the carriage, you just, uh, there's a lever behind each handle and you just pull it in. You can hear the bell on this one. And then you can move the carriage. And then if you wanna bring them in, you can bring them in. And again, it's only gonna go as far as you have the margins set. Now on the carriage itself, where you put your paper is gonna be right here between this top metal plate and the one that looks like a ruler. And you are just gonna slip your paper in there and turn the handle, making sure that your paper comes underneath this metal bar. And I just like to make sure those rollers are on the paper. It keeps the paper flat against the roller. Otherwise, air pockets can get behind that paper and you'll hear this like this slap, slap, slap when you are trying to type and that means there's air behind there. This lever on the right side is paper release. That releases the tension on the paper so that you can like move it around if you need to or take it out, all right? Just make sure you re-engage it because it's not gonna load if it's not re-engaged. On the left side is your line selector. So you'll see one, one and a half, two. You just put, you know, what you want on that. And then when you hit the return handle, it's gonna advance either one, one and a half or two lines. Um, this releases the roller. Um, so if you wanna take it out, you can, I, and I'm just not even gonna go into that. Also, you can press in a button on the left side. You'll see, if you look at the handles, they look different. The one on the left has this button sticking out of it. And if you press that while turning your roller, that is like, um, it releases, uh, so you have a little more freedom in setting your cursor. So when you turn it regularly, you can hear the click and the click is every half of a line. But if you turn it while holding that button in, that's not there, okay? Now, while the handle is over to the left and not above the top of the typewriter, then we can open it up and you'll see a ribbon. This is where your ribbon goes and it takes a two inch spool. This has a universal ribbon in it. It's not the original, but the universal ribbons are a two inch spool. This happens to have black and red on it. When you need to change it out, you just pull it out and you'll see two pins, one big one and then one real little pin. The little one needs to go in one of these four holes. That's how it turns the spool. So when you slap a new one down, you might have to jiggle it around a bit to get it in. There we go, and it pops down. And then make sure it's threaded, threaded through properly. And if you wanna see an up close photo of this so you know how to thread your ribbon in, again, the product listing link for this typewriter is below. Most likely it's already been sold. But if you click on that link, you can still see all the photos, including an up close image of this area, okay? Um, 
to manually change your switch directions on your ribbon, there's a key, uh, tab over here called Rib Rev, and you just go back and forth, okay? And that goes, that'll reverse the direction of your ribbon. To set your tabs, this is just to advance to the next tab. This one will set it and this button will clear it. This is an electric typewriter with a manual return. It does need to be plugged in to the wall. It doesn't have batteries or chargers. It has to be plugged in to the wall. So even though this is considered a portable electric because it comes with a case that has a handle, I don't like to schlep these around because they're actually really heavy. Um, okay, and then we have a regular space bar, a half a space, and a power space. And the half a space comes in handy if uh, you're trying to scrunch, uh, you want to have your, your letters scrunched in together, then you can do a half a space. This is your color selector. It's on black or you have red. Now margin, MR is margin release. So what that means is when you, let me turn, this is your power switch, let me turn it on. When you get to the end of your margin, it's gonna ding. Yay! But let's say you're in the middle of a word and you wanna finish your word. If you hit margin release, you'll see it kinda of, uh, shifted. Then now you can finish your word if you want. Um, copy set, that just determines how hard these type bars are gonna strike your paper. This is your backspace. But backspace does not erase, it only backspaces. So if you make a mistake, you can just type over or you can X out or cross out. One thing you need to know about electric typewriters, there are three keys with an auto repeat. That's your dash, your period, and your X. Okay. Um, what else on this typewriter? Uh, some people ask where this serial number is. Mm, let me see if I can remember. Sometimes it's on the bottom. Let me just look really quick. Yep, so your serial number on the on this Electra 120 is gonna be right here, a little metal plate and it's stamped into it. And then you can look up the data manufacturer on typewriter database. Now, keep in mind the uh, 60s and 70s, Smith Coronas really don't have consistent uh, dates, you kind of can narrow it down to decades. So I happen to know this one's from the 70s, but I don't know exactly when. All right. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see the actual typing demo, uh, that will be under the product listing link and you can find that in the description below. I hope this helps you. I hope you're enjoying your typewriter and happy typing.